And that word infinite is a very important word to think about because um, it's the opposite of finite. Finite means something begins and ends. If it didn't end any place or didn't begin any place, we wouldn't be able to call it finite. We would say it is always continuing. The minute that it stops, the minute we have a form to it, the minute we place anything on it that, uh, that is associated with this physical corporeal world that we all live in, um, it moves from the infinite to the finite. So to try to define that which is infinite with a brain or a mind that is finite is an impossibility. Lao Tzu knew this and understood this. It's why meditation is such an important part of the uh, process of, uh, of coming to our highest self, coming to know who we are. It's the place where there are no beginnings. Herman Melville once said that God's one and only voice is silence. Is silence. It's the one place where there's nothing finite there. And Blaise Pascal, the famous uh, French philosopher and scientist, once said that uh, all of man's troubles stem from his inability to sit quietly in a room alone. But most of us just aren't comfortable with this because we have come to believe and trust in the evidence for who we are is on the basis of that which we can touch and see and feel and smell what our five senses tell us. But our five senses lie to us. William Blake pointed that out beautifully in one of his poems back in 1777. He said, to see the world in a grain of sand, in a heaven in a wild flower, to hold eternity in the palm of your hand and infinity in an hour, we are all led to believe a lie when we see with, not through the eye, which was born in a night to perish in a night while the soul slept in beams of light. We are all infinite beings in a temporary human experience. I've said it over and over again. Whenever people ask me, what's my very favorite quote, my very favorite observation? It came from Pierre Tellard, the French priest who was excommunicated from the Catholic Church for his outrageous ideas. He said that we're not here as human beings having a spiritual experience. It's the other way around. We are all infinite spiritual beings having a temporary human experience. And coming to a place where we live our lives from that infinite place and beginning to know our soul. So th getting to know this, the soul, the spirit, and not identifying ourselves on the basis of our, our physical senses. It's the essence of my newest book, um, which is a PBS special, called Wishes Fulfilled. It's the whole message behind all of it, is to really come up with a specific way to, um, to come in contact with this infinite part of ourselves. Now remember, if it's infinite, it doesn't stop any place. It doesn't start any place. That's, by definition, infinite. So if something doesn't start and doesn't stop, what is it doing? It has to be expanding, doesn't it? The minute it stops expanding, it's finite. We're no longer talking about the soul. We're talking about what Blake said. We've become, we, <clears throat> we see with, not through our eyes. So here's what I jotted down. The ideal of the soul, the thing that it asks for, is neither knowledge nor light 
nor happiness. The ideal of the soul is space, immensity. The one thing it needs more than anything else is to be free to expand and to reach out and to embrace the infinite. Yet the ideal of the soul is infinity because that's what the soul is. All of us are here in bodies that we believe is who we are. We're totally convinced of it. I was in a 21-year-old body and I can't find any part of it anywhere on the planet. <laughs> But while I was in it, I was absolutely convinced that this is who I am. And, and then I moved into another body and another body and another body. And the same is true for each and every one of us here, that there is some part of us that is infinite, that is the soul, that is the spirit,